Peace and Pan-Africanism family, Peace and Pan-Africanism. Dr. Umar Ifatunde checking in from Southeast DC, Frederick Douglass neighborhood. I just visit the great ancestors, Cedar Hill home a few blocks away, Southeast DC, all of DC. I am in the building. So I'm hoping our African leaders will stand strong. I'm hoping our African leaders will not fall for the propaganda of the global white power structure. Brothers and sisters, let us be clear. The white man wants Africa, and he wants Africa in the worst way. Now, some of you are going to say, well, Dr. Umar, doesn't the white man already have Africa? Doesn't he control the gold, and doesn't he control the diamonds? Yes, he does. But the problem, brothers and sisters, is even though the white man is exploiting the mineral resources of Africa, he wants to dominate the entire continent of Africa. See, there's a difference between stealing resources and controlling the land. He doesn't just want to steal the resources. He wants to control the land. Africa has so much untapped minerals, so much of the world's untapped mineral resources are in the continent of Africa that the white man will only feel totally comfortable if he can dominate the territory, dominate the land, control the terrain. And that's one of the biggest reasons why they're trying to reduce the population of the mother continent. And now you have China. Now you have China coming in. You know damn well the Chinese want Africa for themselves. And the Chinese want to get Africa before the white man gets Africa. I said the Chinese want to get Africa before the white man gets Africa. Don't you know that the COVID was manufactured in China? If the COVID virus was manufactured in China, the Wuhan lab. If the Chinese and the white man came together to make the COVID, why can't they come together to use it to exterminate African people? I want you to understand, overstand, and understand. I want you to understand, overstand, and understand. As much as they tell you the white man don't like the Chinese, and as much as they tell you the Chinese don't like the white man, as much as they tell you the white man don't like the Chinese, and as much as they tell you the Chinese don't like the white man, how in the hell did the white man and the Chinese man come together to make COVID in the first place if they don't get along? Help me understand, overstand, and understand. And if you don't think that the white man and the Chinese man will work together, remember, my enemy's enemy is my friend. Remember, my enemy's enemy is my friend. Remember, my enemy's enemy is my friend. If you don't think the white man and the brown man won't work together to exterminate the black man, then you've never read a history book in your life. If you don't think the white man and the brown man will work together to genocide the African, then you don't know anything about foreign policy. You don't know anything about political science. You don't know anything about international relations. The white man and the Chinese man will get rid of the black man and then they will fight it out. In fact, who is to say that the white man and the brown man, the mountain man and the cave man, who is to say that the mountain man and the cave man haven't already come together and had another Berlin conference? Oh, yes, brothers and sisters. Who is to say that the white man and the brown man haven't already had a confidential Berlin Conference. Who remembers the Berlin Conference of 1884-1885? Who remembers the Berlin Conference of 1884-1885? Who remembers the Berlin Conference of 1884-1885 where the European powers of the world came together to decide who would colonize which part of Africa and not a single African was there? Not a single African was there. Who remembers the Berlin Conference of 1884-1885 when the European powers of the world came together to decide who would colonize each part of the mother continent and not a single African was invited? You want to talk about white supremacy? 
You want to talk about colonialism? You want to talk about imperialism? You want to talk about new world order? You want to talk about scramble for Africa? Them devils came together. Them devils came together in 1884 and decided that entire pieces of land belong to them with no agreement from the black man. How are you going to take somebody's land and not even ask their permission? This is what the white man did. Who is to say the Chinese and the white man haven't done another Berlin? I believe the American and the Chinaman. I believe the white man and the brown man. I believe the European and the Asian have come together and they have already a portion Africa. I think the United States of America and the empire of China. I think the United States of America and the empire of China have already divided Africa between the two of them already. I believe that there's a map already in existence. I believe there is a map already in existence that shows which parts of Africa belongs to America and which parts of Africa belongs to the Chinese. I believe they have already had another Berlin conference. I believe they have already had another Berlin conference. And I believe the Chinese and the Americans, the Chinese and the Americans, the Chinese and the Americans have already agreed. Once we get the African numbers low enough to manage them, we're going to do what we did 100 years ago and tell these black folks that this is American land now and tell these black folks that this is Chinese land now. Think about it, brothers and sisters. I do not think it is a far off idea to understand, overstand and understand. I do not believe it is a far off idea to understand, overstand and understand that the Chinese government and the American government may have already come to an agreement on the recolonization of Africa. I think the Chinese government and the American government have already came together on an agreement for the recolonization of Africa. China going to take half, the white man going to take half. China going to take half, the white man going to take half. They're going to say, listen, China, we don't have to fight. We don't have to go to war. How about we do what we did before? It worked 100 years ago. We think it could work now. Let's just do what we did before. After all, we're, we're cousins. You're from Asia. We're from Asia. We're cousins anyway. So why about we work together and get rid of the African? Get rid of the African. And then once we reduce the African population to low enough numbers... We don't want to get rid of all the blacks because we need them to work for us just like they did 100 years ago in colonization. So we don't want to get rid of all the blacks because we can have white folks catching yellow fever and, 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 and malaria. So, you know, white men still scared of African diseases. White men are still scared of African disease. The Chinese man can't last in the African bush. The white man can't last in the African bush. So they don't want to get rid of all the Africans because they need Africans to labor for them. But they want to get rid of the pan-Africanists. They want to get rid of the revolutionaries. They want to get rid of the intellectuals. Let's shut up the Africans who are trying to wake the other Africans up. Get rid of all them. And once we got rid of all the rebel rousers, we will then declare martial law in Africa, colonization, recolonization, the takeover, China will take half the continent and the white man will take half the continent. If the white man didn't need an African at the table a hundred years ago to slice up Africa, he damn sure don't need an African at the table a hundred years later. If the white man didn't need Africa at the table a hundred years ago to slice up Africa, he damn sure don't need the African at the table to slice up Africa now, brothers and sisters. I'm giving it to y'all real. I'm giving it to y'all real. I'm giving it to y'all real, brothers and sisters. We have to stop letting the oppressor outthink us. If you are the leader of an African nation and you ain't ready to die, then you are not a leader. You're a puppet. I'm going to say it again. If you are the leader of an African country, a Caribbean country, a Central or South American African country, and you're not ready to die, then you're not a leader. You're a puppet. I'm not saying anybody wants to die. Nobody wants to die. But what I'm saying is 
If you ain't got the courage to risk your life in the service of your people, if you don't have the courage to do what Osaja for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah did, if you don't have the courage to do what Robert Sabukwe did, if you don't have the courage to do what Amakal Cabral did, if you don't have the courage to do what Walter Rodney did and Maurice Bishop did, if you don't have the courage to do what Samara Michelle did, if you're not willing to risk your life in the service of African people, don't run for office. We have had an entire century of puppet leadership, puppet leadership in black America, puppet leadership in the black Caribbean, puppet leadership in black Africa, puppet leadership in black Australia, puppet leadership in black Canada, puppet leadership in black Europe. If you are not willing to go to jail, if you're not willing to lose your job, if you're not willing to go broke, if you're not willing to lose your life, get out the struggle. The Chinese are no friend to the black man. The Chinese is conspiring with the white man because if he wasn't conspiring with the white man, the Wuhan lab could have never been the birthplace of COVID. How in the hell can the Wuhan lab be the birthplace of COVID if the white man don't like the brown man? How did COVID get birthed in Wuhan if the Chinese and the Americans don't work together. Of course they work together and they're working together for the recolonization of African people. What do we do about the snow bunny lovers? What are we going to do in a world war for African liberation? What are we going to do in a world war for African liberation when your cousin got a white girl and your sister got a white man and your nephew got a Chinese girl? And your niece got a Chinese man. And your best friend got an Arab girlfriend. And her brother got a, got a, got a, uh, and, 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 and his sister got an Arab husband. What are we going to do with all these multicultural romances in the black community? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send them to the other side. No way in hell you fighting with me and you pillow talking with my enemy. There's no way in hell you fighting with me and you pillow talking with my enemy. What you mean you want to fight for African liberation and go home and, and sleep with the white woman? You want to fight for African liberation and go home and lay up with your white husband and tell him our plans and tell him our strategies and tell him our tactics and tell him our... Nah, family. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. This revolution of ours will be 100% unapologetically African. This revolution of ours. I had a conversation today at the Sankofa bookstore. Shout out to Holly Jerima. I had a conversation today with a beautiful Eritrean sister today on Georgia Avenue Northwest at the Sankofa bookstore. We had a respectable debate respectable debate between my younger sister and her big brother. She is a pan-African socialist. I am a pan-African nationalist. And she believes that if we destroy capitalism, we will destroy racism. And I tried to get my young sister to understand, overstand, and understand that capitalism didn't invent white supremacy. White supremacy invented capitalism. You can get rid of capitalism and you'll still have racism. Go to China. They communists, still racism. Go to Russia. They communists, still racist. Racism is not about capitalism. Racism is about white genetic survival. I said racism is not about capitalism. Racism is about white genetic survival. I said racism is not about capitalism. Racism is about white genetic survival. Me and my sister, we're going to finish the conversation. It was a great conversation. I love an educated young black woman. I love an educated young black. She was dropping her bombs too. Strong sis. She was dropping her Pan-African bombs. But when I dropped that Garvey grenade, when I dropped that Robert Sabukwe grenade, 
When I dropped that Patrice Lumumba grenade, it was nothing she can do, but I love my sister. So I am here tonight. I got to go and get ready to drop the Washington, D.C. bomb. I'm around the corner from the house of my ancestor, four times great grand cousin, four times great grand cousin, four times great grand cousin, the Honorable Frederick Douglass. The most honorable kinsman of mine, Frederick Douglass. Who was raised by my six times great grandmother and father, rest in peace, the Queen Mother Betsy Bailey and King Isaac Bailey, the grandparents of Frederick Douglass, Dr. Umar's six times great grandparents. I said Isaac Bailey and Betsy Bailey, the grandparents who raised Frederick with my grandpa Steve on Tuckahoe Creek, Maryland. So I'm dedicating my speech tonight to the Honorable Frederick Douglass. He's the king of black activism. I'm the prince of black activism. He's the king of black activism. I'm the prince of black activism. Flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. Flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. That's why I told you haters, stop hating on me. This is a God-given covenant that the Most High made with the Bailey dynasty. It is a God covenant, just like the covenant in the books of Moses, just like the covenant in the Old Testament. The Most High said, we shall send another one in your place. He told Frederick Douglass, I will send another one in your place. And so the prince of Pan-Africanism is here to finish the works of his cousin, the Honorable Frederick Douglass. DC, I'm here. Come on out. 1231 Good Hope Road Southeast. 1231 Good Hope Road Southeast, 6 to 10. I got 20 minutes to get ready and I'm going to drop the Garvey grenade if you can't make the lecture, stop by at 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock and get a copy of the book. It's the Prince of Pan-Africanism, King Kong Consciousness, and the words of Frederick Douglass. Agitate, agitate, agitate. Peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism. King Kong Consciousness Intercontinental Ifa Tunde, the notorious RBG. Brothers and sisters, I'm live and direct. Washington, D.C. The Prince is in the building. I have arrived. It's going down tonight at the Anacostia Arts Center, Southeast D.C., Doors are open right now, family. Go and support the black businesses at the Anacostia Art Center. They got bookstore. They got vegan restaurant. They got all kind of stuff inside the Anacostia Art Center. And this is the King Kong Consciousness, D.C. First lecture visit in two years. It's been two long years, and I got a lot to talk about. So make sure you're in the building tonight. Anacostia Art Center, 6 until 10. Doors is open right now, family. Come on through. Releasing a new book, Black Parent Advocate. The Art of War for Dealing with America's Public and Charter School. How y'all doing, ladies? Good. You, you, I'm gonna, I'm you want a photo? No problem. We yeah, can do it. Thank you. Hold on. I got to get one on mine. Okay. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Right there. Right there. Appreciate it. Can I take a picture with you? Sure you can. Sure you can, gorgeous. Thank you. Oh one more, God. one more. Oops, wrong phone. Gotcha. Can I get one of sure them? you can, oh sure you can, you sure you can. can. I'm speaking tonight at the Anacostia Art Center in Southeast DC. 
6 to 10, it's free, no tickets, you just come. Where's that? Yes. Thank you. Appreciate it, ladies. Sure. Keep going. And I don't want to see y'all with no white boys. I'm not playing. No snow bunch. All right. All right. All right. All right, ladies. Y'all be blessed. Y'all be blessed. It's King Kong, D.C. I'm in the building. Frederick Douglass City. I'm in the building. Pull up team. Free event. Black Parent African book release. D.C. I'm back, baby. The capital of black consciousness and the capital of the country. What's up? I got to grab something to eat. Yeah, All right, Sankofa Bookstore. Black Power. What I want, what I want. Uh... Let me go with that. Kathleen Collins Panini. And what's I got the, uh, let me see these drinks one time. How you doing, good sister? I'm sorry, No problem, no problem. Y'all don't do smoothies, right, Papa? Y'all do? Excuse me, gorgeous. Where your smoothie menu at? All right. I'm going to go with, uh, let me do that uh, Berry Blast. Say again. Uh, I'm going to eat it here. Appreciate you.